Hey, Paul. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Oh, Paul, Hi, nice to see you. Great. Thank you. Awesome. I'm looking forward to uh, a conversation. Awesome. And then tonight. Tonight's going to be great. I don't even know where to start with you. Do you even know where you were yesterday and where you're going this afternoon and where you're going tomorrow? I mean, how busy yes. is your crazy schedule, Paul? Honestly. Ye yes, yesterday I was seething. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's probably not a good conversation <laughs> for us to have. Uh, yes, I was seething. But so last week I was in, um, and this is, yeah. like, this is my yeah. life. Yeah, um, this is your life. That's so, what I want. That's why I'm here. <laughs> so last week I was in... Um, Nashville, the night of the tornado, I was um, maybe a half a mile away from where the tornadoes were. For real? Mm -hmm. And then um, I had to, from there I flew to LA. And when I got to LA, I come to find out that somebody with um, an identified case of Corona oh, yeah. had flown from Boston to Nashville. But I have nobody's reached out to me to say he was on my flight, but that was a thing that was in the paper. So it's just like I I have the worst travel luck. Like they tell me, like you. Like well, when when tornadoes, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, yeah. And then so I went to L.A. and then took a red eye back on Thursday and then went home, changed my put my clogs on, changed my pants. Your chef clogs. My chef clogs, yeah. and then came here. And started prepping for a tasting that I was having that morning on Friday morning. Yeah. And I've been I've been recovering ever since. Like just I worked yeah. yesterday. So you and I are about the same age. I think we we. Uh, oh, you're way younger than me. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, you're way. Younger. No, and 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 you know, staying up late and doing red eyes and you know binging your shows or whatever you do when you're doing all this like crazy travel. You, you look good. I mean, you don't look tired at all. I mean, and I what you do. I, I was told. I was told yesterday I look tired. Oh, really? I, I was told that yesterday. Well, I that's because you were seething. I was talking to. Yes, <laughs> that's probably because you were I, seething. I was talking to a friend. He goes, "You look a little weary," <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm good." <laughs> and it was funny. It was a guy that I've known for for a few yeah. years, and he was just like, "You look a little weary," and I'm like, "No, I'm good. Don't worry." But this is a schedule that, I mean, did you dream when you were five? When I was a child. I played with Barbies, right? Yep. And my Barbies flew. They told stories. Skipper never changed her little tankini. Yep. She never changed it. I didn't care about their, what they wore. I'm sorry, her what? It's like, a, you know, she had an orange bathing suit, Skipper. Yeah. She was the younger sister yeah, know, of Barbie. Yeah, I know, I, Do you know yes. Skipper? She was and, actually the cooler one. And she didn't have like the high heel feet. Yeah. You know, she had like regular feet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she didn't have the Mattel 1966 yeah. on her rear end. And I would just have them do stories. And I feel like you are who you are when you're born. And if you're allowed to, to and encouraged to just be that. So what kind of things did you play with as a child? I mean, were you like making spaghetti at like two or no, four? I, we, we did stuff yeah. growing up. Like I cooked, like I, I didn't really cook. My parents cooked. Yeah. But as I got older, like I learned how to, like French toast was my thing. Yeah. So I could make French toast in like 30 seconds. Cause like, if you wanted to eat, you made food. <laughs> so, um, but for me, I was always trying to figure things out and I was a walking, talking accident. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was always something for me. <laughs> um, no, wait. So where's your birth order? You're what? I'm fourth from the top. Fourth from the top. Yeah. And what from the bottom? Uh, fifth from the bottom, because <laughs> that would be that would make nine. Yeah. So Alma Nove. Uh, Alma Nove. So Alma is my mother's name, and Nove is Italian for nine for her nine children. Nine children. Nine children. Yeah. And so you did a reality show. You're not doing that now, but you did a reality show. Yes. Is it what we think it is? I mean, literally, were they like following you almost all the way into the bathroom? Like what? Like what was that like? No, they was followed it me into the bathroom, but there wasn't really much to see. <laughs> Um, it was when they were here doing it, yeah. it was like that. Yeah. And then when they weren't, it wasn't. Yeah. So some of the things were happening in very real time. And so you were having those real time moments. And those were the hottest ones for me because not everything I feel like that happens in the restaurant world is fit for right. general consumption. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't want people like there, there's some conversations that you're going to have with people. Yeah. That really shouldn't be like, you know, be it, you know, business conversations or right. 
tactical conversations or even like, you know, conversations with, with, with other employees and stuff like that. So <clears throat> that was the hard part for me is that real time kind of stuff. Yeah. But then those pieces were like, you know, sitting down doing the, like that stuff was, was easier for me, but it was just, it's just like the talking head parts. So remember, remember five months ago when you tasted that, you know, that red wine reduction <laughs> and tell me what you really thought of it. I'm like, it was five, like, yeah. like ask me what happened five minutes ago. I'll struggle with <laughs> never mind five months ago. So there are moments like that, yeah. but it was good because they, they, they chronicled a lot of things. And they saw a lot of things and we, we got to experience together a lot of things. And then, you know, the other opportunities that kind of came along with it were great. Yeah. So when you were a kid, back to that, um, yeah, and your parents cooked and you made the French toast. But what kind of like toys did you like? Like what did you play with that? that boy boy toys. Yeah. Like, so, we, like building stuff. I had yeah. a G.I. Joe. That, that was yeah. fun. We had big wheels. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, so that's lovely. Yeah. So what we have here is the, uh, it's the house mold tell you, uh, house made tell you tell you with our bolognese sauce and an herb mascarpone. And then we have a sear, uh, pan seared dusk, duck breast and that served with a risotto, roasted butternut squash, uh, fig reduction. Um, and it's just, it's super, super tasty. It's just like the flavors, all of the different things that go in there is one Charlie in the, uh, in the risotto. So you get that really nice kind of smokiness. You get that really nice kind of bacony flavor. It's really good. So when did you know that you had an ability to um, parse uh, the variety of ingredients that there is? I still don't. Yeah. I'm still working on that. Really? I always feel like I, I, I never feel like I know what I'm doing at any given point. I always feel like I can do a better job. I have to work harder yeah. at it. And so the good thing is that what I love about food is that I can taste something and say, okay, I want to go in a direction with it. So yeah. like if I taste something, this would be great with X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And so those types of things, it's like people who have, you know, really sophisticated wine palates yeah. would be like, oh, I taste it in the tannins and this and that. They say, oh, this would be perfect with, 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 with rack of lamb. This would be perfect with <laughs> yeah. this. And so it's those things and always trying to feed their creative part because yeah. that's, it's, it's, I'm more of a fidget than anything. I don't really sit well. I'm always kind of moving around. Well, thank you for sitting with me. And so... Um, <laughs> Given that. I, well, <laughs> there, there are certain requirements for our days. Um, but it's for me, it's 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 just a, it's a great outlet yeah. to, to be able to cook and to be able to create. And so I always felt like I was creative, yeah. but never really quite sure how I wanted to create. And I like that the idea of starting with a blank, like kind of like a painter who's starting with that yeah. blank slate. Yeah. Uh, that you know that clear canvas yeah. and going all the way and creating something or taking something even like the building part so like when I do woodwork and stuff like that it's looking at a piece of wood and figuring okay like I want to either do x y or z with this yeah I'm of that same ilk I'm of that same ilk and whether it's fixing flipping building homes or creating a tv show out yeah. of nothing um I can see it ahead of time mm -hmm. and and I love that process and and, and, I, and I do, and I understand exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. When you figure out what that end result is, mm -hmm. and then okay, now I just backfill everything. Yeah. Now I know what I, I know where I want to end up. How am I going to get there? Yeah. And that part of it. And there's certain times where I will kind of talk myself out of it because of some. I will find that one step becomes like so overwhelmingly complicated. It's like, oh crap! How am I yeah. going to get past like this? Like souffle type complicated? Because to me, a souffle is just like. That's where I said, you know what? I'm never going to be a chef. The souffle, the souffle is actually easy if you just, if you do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. If you're good at following direction. Yeah, not good at that. Then, then, you, <laughs> then you can go. And so there are certain parts of it. So that's why I don't, I, 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 I can bake and I've baked a lot. Yeah. But I don't like to bake because that's. Fastidious a, too. There's a, there's a formula yeah. and a science to it where I'm a little more of like, oh, this would be great with a little of X, a little of Y, yeah. like, and as I taste yeah. things. Yeah. Open-ended. But certain, mm. certain um, chemical reactions, right. you know, physical some science. reactions yeah. have yeah. to work a certain way in order to, for it to work out properly. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's, and it's even the simple things of like just seasoning pans and things like that and really kind of getting those fundamentals down. Yeah. And it's just, it's fun though. It's, it's, it's never dull in the restaurant. I have 
severe ADD, if I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> um, but it's it's never the same at any one given moment. The only thing you have to do is cook each dish exactly the same way because that's what customers expect. Yeah, that's the part of a restaurant. I mean, and you guys were so, you were here before the shipyard. I mean, this location, yeah. when you came in, I mean, whose idea was it to say, not only am I going to have this restaurant, I'm going to have another restaurant, well, and I'm going to be right here, and then it's going to grow around us? It, it was just, well, the development was here. Yeah. There was the plan. But you were early analysis, adopter. But we were early, but because, but it was just an opportunity that we saw. And so, you know, with with my partners and stuff like that, we talked about it, and we kind of really worked. And once we got this up and running and off the ground, and then, we, you know, obviously, you know, with Wahlburgers and, and how that all plays out, um, so these are the things that like were really important to us and kind of being involved in the details and making sure that, 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 that we did the best we possibly could. Yeah. And so do you like go back and forth from oh, yeah. the restaurant? Yeah, go back and forth. And then our offices are um, on the other side of 3A. Oh, so they are. Oh. As long as I don't get run over crossing 3A, <laughs> it should be fine. Yeah, right. Exactly. But this has really, um, you know, blossomed this whole area. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But, and, and Hingham is such a great town. And being on the South Shore, you know, where being where we are in Dorchester, our natural migration was south. Yeah. Um, I guess if you live in like different parts of the city, like I don't know anything. I didn't know anything about the North Shore. It went Revere and then Maine. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So learning that yeah. as, as we as we expand. But for us, it was just kind of that natural migration. Yeah. So I grew up on Cape Cod. OK. And I was born in Boston. Yeah. And for me, Route 3 yep. was going to Grammy's house in Arlington. Yep. And I never even knew there was a South Shore. Now yeah. I've been here now 20 years on the South Shore. Oh and um, and it was a natural migration for me to not be as isolated as the Cape sometimes can feel, um, but not also be in Boston. So I, I, I love the South Shore. The South Shore is amazing. And you know, all in the, uh, up and down the coast, all of the towns, and just this, that, that general feel of like, being on the South Shore, yeah. that's just, it's amazing. And the people, you know, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm a New Englander, I'm a Massachusetts guy, a Bostonian, Dorchester yep. guy. Yep. And so I, I just, I love the people. I love the area. Your accent's pretty all right, though. <laughs> it, it depends who I'm speaking with. Right. If I'm talking, if, if, I'm, if I'm talking to one of my buddies, yeah. sometimes it gets a little thick. Your mother, your father? Yeah, if I talk to, if my I father talk, and my mother talk like that. If I, I mean. talk, if I talk to my... <laughs> You know, yeah, ma, come on. Yeah. You know, those types of things. <laughs> yeah. But um, but typically, you know, there. I, I lived in Washington, D.C. for three years. And so there was that thing where you, you know, it, it just. People would say, say peanut butter. Say peanut butter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, nobody's ever asked me to say peanut butter. But I, 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 uh, I definitely, you know, but every once in a while, if you let a pissa slip. Yeah. So they go, what? Oh, I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, that's pissing. So, you know, I worked in restaurants. Oh, um, yeah. Well, being in the resort community, yeah, yeah. Um, that's the thing kids did at that time, all the way through like high school, college, graduate school. That's all I did is, is work in restaurants. So I've, I've seen my share of chefs. Um, and so when you were talking about, you know, doing the reality show yeah. and some of those, you know, 86 this or whatever it is, yeah. or ice cubes flicked at you in the back room or whatever it yeah. is. Um, the environment, though, is is kind of addictive. And, and your ADD, speaking to that. It's, that's the thing that there's an energy yeah. that the, the the restaurant business grabs you yeah. and doesn't let go. And I can't imagine, like, I can't imagine people sitting in that, like, in an office all day. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. No. Like, for me, it's like the go, go, go is always happening. Yeah. And that thing, like, I couldn't imagine spending my life a different way. Because it's just, once I knew, once I, someone's, and it was literally that Forrest Gump moment. I was working in my friend's dad's restaurant um, over on Canal Street in Boston. And one of the guys came by, he goes, I was a dishwasher at the time. Yeah. And he says, well, oh, you're pretty good at this. You should maybe think about being a chef. And it was my Forrest Gump moment where I'm like, okay. <laughs> and that was like, and this was long before Forrest Gump, but it was like, <laughs> okay. And that was like, right then it clicked. And it just was like so natural. I said, this is what I want. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do. And I never, I never looked back. Isn't that a beautiful thing? It, it, that was the best, like, yeah. it was the, like the best moment for me. And it's a, it's a hard business. 
Yeah. It's a demanding business and there's crazy people. And there are times when it's not, <clears throat> pardon me, as creative when you have to replicate a dish over and over. And so that part of the way it is, it, you, you're, you're doing that, but when the customer expects the exact exactly. taste it did. So there's parts that you have to just work with because you know your customer you, loves it and you get the satisfaction. But there's parts that are and parts that aren't. Yeah, it's hard. It's a hard but, and it's a long. But, I mean, but what time do you sleep till? But the, but the satisfaction that you get out yeah. of it. When there was a moment where um, I just opened this restaurant as a chef, um, a different restaurant. And um, someone came up to me and said, I've been here five times yeah. and I've had the same dish every time. And I started to well up. Yeah. And there, and like, just like I, like, I was trying not to let it show, but it's like so, such an important thing to me. Yeah. Because someone told you what you want to know and hear is that you make food I come back for. Yeah. You give me a reason to come back here. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. That's what we want, yeah. right? And 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 the elements of food and the elements of of where it can put you in a very specific time and place in your life. If somebody tells you, "Oh my God, that tastes just like my grandfather's ex or my grandmother's Y," you know, my mom used to make this dish all the time, yeah. or I was in Paris a million uh, a while back, yeah. and. Um, had this dish I tasted it in the sauce and I was like oh my god and I'm sitting there with my wife was with me and I was like oh my god. she's like well, what's the matter I, go, I make this sauce and it tastes like this it tastes exactly like this that means I make sauce that they make in Paris and that's a huge thing for me so I'm I'm being true to its origins I'm being true to what others had done before me and so those types of things are all like really important to what it is that yeah. we do because I owe every chef I've ever worked for to teach every, yeah. every kid, every person that comes walking through my doors because that thing, it, if I'm the only one who knows how to do it, if I get run over, yeah. that's the end of it. On 3A, I heard. If I get run over <laughs> no. on 3A, right? Stop. No, nobody, nobody gets stuck, <laughs> nobody gets fallen eggs. Yeah. Right? So we have to teach and we have to learn because I can't make every dish yeah. coming out of the restaurant. Yeah. So yeah. it's the importance of all of it. And to the, the people that you get to meet, especially, you know, all the different cultures, all of the different people, all of the different makeups of all the different people that you meet in this business, it's 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 crazy. Yeah. And but there's an energy that comes along with the mm -hmm. restaurant business. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, there's there's that anticipation. There's the stress. There's the camaraderie. There's I can't tell you the best day I ever had, but I can tell you the worst days we ever had <laughs> because those are the things that's come. And those are the people that you sur you're surrounded with. Those people because you've been through the fires. Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh God. Yeah, no. I, I didn't. Th I, I thought we were done for sure. I <laughs> thought I because when the wheels are falling off the wagon. Oh yeah. In the customer. You mean when care. you're in the weeds? When you're in the weeds, when you are getting buried, when <laughs> when you know, like you never should have. Uh, there was when a, you only have like three servers on and you really uh, should have had nine that night. <laughs> yes. All, every, every, every bit. Uh, yeah. well, I worked in a place and we had, on, on Mother's Day, we had no dishwasher. Yeah. Oh, jeez. So we, we had oh. a very busy day. We had about 300 reservations for the entire day. I, uh, I cooked washed dishes, cleaned up the kitchen at yeah. night, washed the floor, did the whole deal. Yeah. So now I, and being, having been a dishwasher, I know the importance of every person that's on the team, mm -hmm. the importance of every person's participation in yeah. what is because I can't do it without them. Yeah, It's just impossible. I just saw your GM washing the windows. Yeah. So I understand that. Yep. I appreciate that. I respect that. And I know that you have to wear a lot of different hats. Oh my I mean, God, so you have to wear hats, but knowing the background of all of the jobs makes you a tighter unit at the oh, end. Absolutely. You're celebrating 10 years right now. Uh, it'll be 10 years and it'll be 10 years in June. So when you look at like, I'm in, you won't see it because I don't go into the ladies room, but if I'm in the men's room, like, you may walk into, some may walk into the men's room. I'm cleaning the, the glass, yeah. wiping down the counter, making sure there's no trash on the floor. And they look at me like, don't you have people for that? Yeah. <laughs> and 
my feeling is very clear about it. I said, oh yeah, but you know, I just, I'm just, just, just pitching in. But I also know that if I walked out of that bathroom and they were walking in yeah. and I left it yeah. untidy, the first thing in their mind is like, didn't you see this? Yeah. Regardless if I'm going to, to get someone. Yeah. So if you see something, it's if, if it's happening there, you just do it. Yeah. Like, so it's that thing of like, if I'm walking through a table and I see someone, if I'm walking through the dining room and someone needs a table bust, I'm going to bust it. Yeah. <clears throat> and they look at me like, what, what are you doing? I was like, I'm yeah. doing my thing yeah. I, because everything in here is, is our thing. We all, you know, we all have our jobs and we all have our, but we're all team members and we're all, yeah. we're all in it together. And how about your staff retention? I mean, is it, is it good because of that, that family yeah, we've had, feeling? We've had, we've had, we, we still have people here from day one. Yeah. It's amazing. And that to me, like that's, that's been the biggest that's been the biggest thing. Yeah, but when you're when you're not t- too good for cleaning the mirror in the men's room on your way out, that sends a giant message to your entire team that you are part all parts of every system well, that's are a, like, important, and you know that. I'm just a dumbass who's trying to make nice food, <laughs> so I keep it as simple as that. I, I don't look, I don't look at it beyond that, yeah. and so. I, I know that I'm capable of every job in here. Yeah. So why wouldn't I do it? Yeah. Like if I didn't know how to do it, I would ask someone to teach me. Yeah. Because it's just that thing. It's like you never know where you're going to be needed at any one point in the day. Yeah. The simple task of washing dishes yeah. is very soothing. To Meditative. Me. It's it's I'm Especially a spoon. There. Sometimes, yeah. I know I feel like that. Sometimes when I'm doing dishes, I think about the meditative qualities of it. When you're trying to be present, because, you know, if you oh, have all this stuff going on, if you're trying to be present wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you can see that so many things really are an opportunity to reflect. And that, 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 that's way too deep. No, <laughs> I, yeah, that's way too deep for, for, for my interpretation. I just, I just like, I like that some of these, because some jobs that you do have yeah. no end. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And mm-hmm. so you never get a chance because you're just part of the machine okay. that's going. Yeah. Right. So if you come in the middle of the day, you don't open, you don't close. Right. Right. So you just yeah. come in and you run that thing. So it's never ending. Right. It's kind of like working in the post office. The mail <laughs> always comes. Right. It just never stops. <laughs> or polishing the brass. Or polishing the brass. Right. <laughs> so as I'm going through it all. Yeah. Sometimes a simple act of make washing dishes. Yeah. I wash the dishes, clean the station, all that stuff. And there's just like a soothingness to it. And there's a thing of like, and to be able to give somebody else a break who makes my life possible. Yeah. Like what's better than that? Yeah. Because for them to know that I, that I have their back, but also it's like, nobody's asking you a lot of questions when you're washing dishes. Yeah. There's no, like, there's no, there's like, they know that. And it's funny because no, no, we can, we got this, we got this. But no, I got this. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And they feel guilty, like I'm like they're not doing their jobs because right. I'm helping, but I'm helping because I want to be part of it, and it's actually it's that bit of therapy yeah. that I need at that moment. Yeah. There are moments when you when you you realize that someone's listening or someone's paying attention. Yeah, and so like I I have to, I can't go to the cemetery. Yeah, because I stand there and it's like that's not my dad. Yeah, that's just a marker. Yeah. and some grass. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I know that my dad's with me every day. I know my dad's listening. I know my dad's thinking I'm I'm a dumbass, you know, <laughs> when I when I because my dad was a teamster, and there are moments where I'm a horrible driver. I, no, <laughs> I'm a horrible driver all the time. There's not moments of it, but there are moments when I know my dad's thinking, oh, "You should have at least got it by, os- by osmosis." Yeah. you know, <laughs> like I drove all the time. My dad was a very good driver, right? His yeah. my uncle, his brother has never had a car accident in his entire life. And he, he was staff sergeant drove in the, in the, in the army, the whole deal. And, uh, but I was just, I just didn't, I don't have that gene. Yeah. And so, um, it's just, I know that my dad would be laughing and I can hear my dad's voice echoing. Yeah. So Holly, self-deprecating. You know, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> self-deprecating aside. Um, what are the things that you think you are great at? Like, you're, I mean, I've, I've heard a few like, you know, you're, you always want to be better. You're always trying to go for that next thing. But what can you say right now in this moment? You know what? I'm good at this. 
I'm, I'm, I'm a great dumbass. That's basically, <laughs> I keep it, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I never look at, I never look at it that way. It's not, it's not part of my makeup yeah. to say like, I'm really good at this. I'm really good at that because I know I always fall short in what I'm trying to do. Yeah, your expectations my are very expect, high. My expectations of what I want to achieve and be it anything, it's like I always know that I can do a better job yeah. at what I've done. And, and, and it just, I can't shake that. Yeah, that's part of your DNA. So I know that feeling. It's like what, any type of job that I do, if I had done this, it would have either been faster it would have been more effective. It would have been more durable. It would have been this, the seasonings, whatever it is. Like any dish that you put together, it's <clears throat> having that moment of like, if I see it or just a minute longer, just get a little more crisp on the skin. But somebody, other people look at it, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Yeah. That's not enough for me. Yeah. I just can't, I just, because I feel like the minute you think you've arrived, yeah. it's already passed you by, yeah. right? So that thing where it's like, there and there's an ego piece that I don't have yeah. that I, that you know there's a certain you know they, they talk about like especially with like athletes and they have that swagger yeah. like those guys they have to like when you watch NBA players right they're yeah. at the top of the list when you watch NHL players they're at the yeah. top of the list yeah. they're top of their skill right yeah. those people have a swagger right those people know like you're not in the kitchen going <laughs> No, there's, there's, there's nothing like that. <laughs> Humility. I, Humility. I look at my staff yeah. and I tell them when yeah. I let them know when they're doing everything they're supposed to be doing and they're doing a great job yeah. because like that's important yeah. to have that thing. But they also know that I'm looking at it going next time we try, next time we should do it this way. Next yeah. time we should do, yeah. do it, do it that way because we will get to that point. I don't, I don't have the makeup of, say, Muhammad Ali, where he looks at it and goes, I'm the greatest of all time, yeah, right. right? God bless him. And he, he pretty much was, right? <laughs> yeah. So he was more factual than anything. <laughs> but it's just kind of getting to, yeah. like, and, and I would never put myself in that group. But, yeah. but, like, you know, there are a million chefs that I'm in awe of. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, that guy's so talented. Yeah. Right? And they look at me and they, they'll be the same way. It's like. You know, I'm just a dumb, they're, they're just like, I'm just some guy trying to make nice food, yeah. right? And so those are the kinds of people that I want to surround myself with because they always know that the more we push each other, the more we drive and the, the harder we push ourselves, the better results we're going to get. Yeah. And well, you want to be with people who want to be that way. Yeah. You don't want to be around people who are just... You Debbie know, Downers. Uh, uh, no, all about like, <laughs> yeah. and or their own stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, this is like, yeah. you know, I could never put down a dish and say, "This is the best thing you're ever going to try." Yeah, that's just it's just not. It's, but if someone was to come here, which they will, and they do, which dash do you have a dish that you would say this is maybe the one I want to present to them? Like mm -hmm. we have a bolognese here, right? And like, do you have one? But, but we but we had a couple like yeah. My thing is always the conversation. Yeah. I don't cook for me. Yeah. I cook for you. Yeah. So I want to know what you want. Yeah. I want to know what they're interested in. What what dish they say. because if so, if someone says to me, "Geez, what do you recommend?" and I say, "Well, have swordfish," and they go, "Well, I don't eat fish." Yeah. Right. Or they don't want to say to me. Right. I don't. I'm not a real big swordfish person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what's the point of the conversation? Right. Right. So it's I want to make, I want to make, right? yes. Oh, please. <laughs> let's, let's do this. Okay, we're going to, we're going to give you, since you've been eyeballing it, we will put that directly. In well, front cause of I know you. a bolognese, you know, is not easy to perfect. No. Even though it seems like it's a very, it could be. It's a truly a time consuming type of a dish. And you know, I went to um, France with a, with a chef and, that, and we have a, sh a show where in production yeah. for, um, where we went to Paris for four days, went to every culinary, you know, flea market to buy the copper pods and, yep. and, and to the knife store to buy the yep. best Hillier knives or whatever, yep. and went to the, all the things. And then went all the way to the Paul, um, 
the Bocuse you Institute. Bo- yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and cooked there and, and, and was all there. So I'm, but I, you know, for me, cooking, I can be with you a hundred days in a row and <laughs> still just be awe and not, and not be able to implement any of it. And I heard about your mascarpone and I thought. So it was- some of the things that you end up doing and what we see is like getting a chef who can master the simplest things. Yeah. Because there are certain like molecular like things that you see, right? All of those different pieces <laughs> yeah. that you see. Yes. And you look at it, you are like, okay. And you're trying to do the math of it, right? But to have that perfect ravioli yeah. with a perfectly thin pasta, everything is technically perf- perfect. Yeah. And you're like, how the hell did they do that? Those are the ones that I'm in most awe of. Yeah. The simplicity piece of it. Yeah. Like, and taking that, you know, that sow's ear and turning it into a silk purse. That's the thing. Like any chef should be able to cook a tenderloin or a lobster or right. like the foie gras of the world and all of the different things, those yeah. high-end ingredients, right? A ribeye, really doing a great ribeye. Like you start with a great product. It's easy to finish with a great product. But you take something that's going to take a little bit of skill to execute, you know, a, a solid braise where you've got this thing and the flavors and all of the different pieces and turning something like real peasanty into something just spectacular. That's skill. That is to me something. And that's why, and it's like even having those dishes, you know, the haggises of the world and all of those different things and people, how do they eat that? Oh my God, I would never eat that. It's got to taste good or people wouldn't eat it. Right. Right. So how, what are you going to have? What, what are you seeing? What are they bringing to it? And so, and what you grew up with, dictates right so speaking of, of haggis like are you just all irish or what what's where oh, what, no, where are my, you guys like my, where, <laughs> ethnically my Wahlberg is swedish okay um so my dad's side of the family is swedish a little bit of irish there my mother's family goes back to like patrick henry or something and so we're a, we're a good we're a good mix yeah yeah i think of the swedish chef on yeah. uh on yes. muppets remember yes i hold, 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 hold. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes i love the swedish chef so we have those different I, there's a lot of different elements, yeah. but we grew up, we grew up eating really sim- very simply. Yeah. And some of the, my favorite dishes is of those simple things that we had yeah. as kids. And smoke shoulder, my Grammy, because we we're, yeah. we're, you know, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a big percent Irish, yeah. not all, but a, a lot. And uh, smoke shoulder. Smoke shoulder. But, you know, uh, like the, the way that cabbage and those carrots tasted after like yeah. <laughs> simmering in that. So my favorite thing was the smoke shoulder. And then uh, the leftovers. Yeah. And that's the thing that I love the most is making, is taking leftovers and turning them into something. That's where, like to me, that's real skill. Yeah. But my dad used to make um, what we called goulash. And so we would chop up all the vegetables after we did the boiled dinner, yeah. chop up the smoked shoulder and then brown it in the skillet. And then we've had that with pickled beets. And I would drizzle a little bit of the pickled beet juice yeah. over the top of it. And it was ridiculously good. And to me, that's one of those dishes. If, if I had that now, I would be transported back to being a little kid sitting in the city. And, and What's your dad's name? Uh, Donald. Donald. Yeah. I think if you say the name, then they're always here. Oh, yeah. Um, or I hear his voice. I can head. hey, dumbass. <laughs> well, it's hot. Um, and that was the thing, too, growing up. You know, even though we... You know, we we did not have a lot of money when, you know, obviously when food was plentiful, you ate until you were full. Yeah. And, and when you have a big family like that, yeah. you do have to eat quickly. Oh, yeah. Because you need to be able to well, eat same. as much as you can. Because <laughs> like, I know I know from my father's stories. Yeah, same. if I sit down and eat now, I will I will have an empty plate and people are sitting and looking at me like, oh, my God. <laughs> and it's just, I can't help it. Oh, when you're out to dinner with friends and yes. you're, you're yeah, so just and clean? I'm sitting there like, and looking at me like what's going on? I go, because like I don't even eat sitting down most of the time. I'm yeah. more comfortable standing up, yeah. you know, eating or like yeah. like standing in a corner, yeah. in the, in somewhere in the kitchen eating. Yeah. Because that's just it's just not. That Do you way. have a favorite meal that you would? Because people have asked me like if it was your last day, what would you have? You know, the the last like meal that you would eat. And I'm always like, oh, I think it would be a lobster roll, and I think there'd be French fries if I'm not working on my weight right then. You know, and and, and like. I definitely have oysters and I would definitely like, is there something that is like of all the food from all the world you've cooked and tasted and tried and 
scene, is there something that you just say, this is the thing that really I come back to? Is it the family stuff or it is it be, is it the goulash? It would be something like that yeah. or um, an egg sandwich made by my daughter. An egg sandwich. So my daughter, I Like a fried her, egg sandwich? It's a fried egg sandwich. I, I showed her, showed her yeah. how to make it, yeah. how I like it. Yeah. And she makes it how I like it. And it's an egg, uh, ham, uh, a little bit of ketchup and sriracha. Ooh. The yolk is runny, the bread is toasted, and it's the perfect egg sandwich. And, and I showed her how to make it. Yeah. It's not so much the, the, the food piece, yeah. but the meaning of that food. Mm -hmm. So something, if I could, if I could have a meal with anybody, it would be my dad. Yeah. Right? Because obviously my dad's gone. Yeah. And um, it would be that moment. Um, having roast pork made by my mom. Yeah. Right? That's like that thing. Yeah. Pot I, roast. My mom did yeah, pot roast. Yeah. That was just crazy. So, roast pork, mashed potatoes, gravy. Yeah. I don't, the vegetables yeah. are inconsequential yeah. at that point. And that thing of just sitting down and having that and sharing that with. You know, but that would, that's my last meal. But this is what our show is about. I mean, the fellowship that we experience, the privilege I have of sitting down almost every episode, almost at a table with their friends and their family with a meal. So your meal didn't come as, you know, a little bit of uh, an egg, a spaghetti, whatever it is. It came with the people imbued mm -hmm. in that it came with the experience no i the, totally agree where you have those yeah. it's people if i go to someone's house yeah and they're cooking for me right especially like you go to someone's house and like the mom's cooking for you whatever right yeah and i thought about this when i was younger because when i first started cooking right and my, my friend's mom said to me this oh my god i'm so nervous about you know, cooking you know chef this all this right yeah. and i'm like I'm like no but I'm so honored yeah. that you are making food and sharing food that you make for your family with me. Yeah. I'm the one who's blessed yeah. because you've invited me in to have food that you make for your family. No matter how simple yeah. we may think that is. Yeah. Like it's just, you know, it's a chore. Like, oh God, I gotta, you know, you come home from work, yeah, I gotta cook, right? And yeah. you do that thing. Yeah. But what it imparts to the kids and, the, the, and what they feel about and I'd sit there and I'd tell my, you know, I'd sit there and like, oh my God, this is unbelievable because that's what I grew up eating. I'm, I, I am super simplistic with what I want to eat on a regular basis. Yeah. You know, I go to places, I have expectations. Yeah. You go to a mom and pop restaurant, the first ingredient you want to taste is the love and care that they put into it yeah. because that's every, it's everything to them. You go to a place where it's more that factory and yeah. it's people just going through the motions, but you can taste when someone cares about what they're doing. Yeah. And so, you know, the idea that, you know, the mom or the dad is making that dish, yeah. their fav their kid's favorite dish, yeah. you know, or that it's like, it's pizza Friday. It's, it, it's, you know, chicken frigacy. Chicken fr <laughs> That's what I just came to my mind. Yeah. It was this like, sort of like, pillowy yeah. type oh. and it was one pot yeah. and the chicken frigacy just came into my mind so what we called a corn dish yeah ground beef cream corn mashed potatoes yeah. but the cream corn was everything because that gave you the sauce yeah right and so having that cream corn and we would make it in these skillets this big i worked in a restaurant i don't know if i told you i worked in this restaurant and um they served hamburgers on English muffins hmm. and they had uh, they had a grill and they grilled they made grilled pizzas for the bar yeah. right for the for the tavern area I was so excited yeah. I said because they had the sandwich muffins yeah. Yeah. and I'm like oh my god I can make English muffin pizzas for myself <laughs> so I would literally every once in a while I would make myself dinner and it would be English muffin pizza because <laughs> that's what I grew up eating Sweet. and I've had some of the best pizza from some of the finest you know <laughs> Neapolitan chefs, like just like unbelievable <laughs> yeah. skill, right? 
But at the end of the day, you want comfort food yeah. literally is there to comfort you. Yeah. And so having those dishes that mean everything to you growing up, it's like to, like for us growing up, Papa Gino's yeah. or Papa Gino's. One of my jobs, by the yeah. way, before I could actually serve alcohol yeah. and I had to go to restaurants before. And that pizza, that sauce. But that <laughs> Papa Gino style pizza, yeah. Regina style yeah, pizza, yeah. all of those pizzas, yep. that's Boston style pizza. Yeah. That's what we grew up eating. Not the deep dish, not the thin crust, <laughs> like just that that great, tasty, you know, good sauce, yeah. good cheese, like all of that stuff. But the crust was very, there's a kind of that New England style pizza, yeah. that New England style pie. And it's going to vary down in Connecticut and Rhode Island. Yeah. Well, they places. don't have, it's just, it's just sauce on the yeah. pizza. And yeah. the <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, so there's that, all the differences that you yeah. get, but it's having those things that are really important to us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, so we should probably eat this food at some point. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a privilege to chat with you. Well, I can't wait to be in the kitchen with you. Well, I think you're amazing, well. obviously. And you might, might not say it, but I, I, I'm saying it. You know, um, well, the idea is it's really hard work, so it should, we should make as much fun out of it as you possibly can. Enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, that whole deep being in the moment thing, I, don't, <laughs> I still don't get. <laughs> well, I don't think you're a dumbass, actually. But well, you know what? Sometimes a hard upbringing, it, it makes, you, makes you keep your bar high. Well, and that's it. And, you know. There's a lot of love that went behind that dumbass. You know what? Oh, I know. I and and I and I'm so blessed mm. to, and I, you know, people, you know, they, they talk to you about it. And I'm like, I wouldn't change where we came from. Yeah. I love growing up in Dorchester. Yeah. Could life been have been easier with X or Y? Absolutely, yeah. but it's not. It's not important. No, but just like a dish, everything yeah. that goes into it is all part of it, mm -hmm. and you will be who who you are, which is you know. Filled with humility, honestly, and lots of talent. I, would, I don't know about that. Yep. <laughs> but if the food's in front of me, I have to eat it. <laughs> so, um, my dad, out, uh, he, had, he had a couple of strokes, and so he was yeah. living with me at the time. Yeah. And I was... Um, but I would be getting ready for work. And like literally putting my hat on, yeah. which was the last piece of the puzzle yeah. before I'm walking out the door, yeah. right? Like, geez, you think you could make me some breakfast? And I'm like, like looking around and I'm like, ah, sure, of course, <laughs> right? But I had, um, I had bacon, uh, 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 I had breakfast, so he liked corned beef and hash or Canadian bacon, yeah. so it was one of the two, yeah. uh, home fries and eggs. I had it down to seven minutes. I could make breakfast and- Home fries in seven minutes? <laughs> you must My, have prepped something, no? <laughs> I would microwave the potatoes, Okay. take them out, yep. get the get the skillet hot with the oil, right? And put in, you know, whatever seasonings. I was putting in, put the potatoes and just brown them up very quickly. Yeah. The corned beef hash was just hormel, which to this day I love. I yeah. still I still eat it. Um, but having that and then and then just poaching eggs, yeah. like a cup of tea and some toast and do the whole thing. But I could do it in seven minutes. Wow. And if he if he gave me usually he, he, that he'd wait until I was either walking out the door or getting in the shower. Yeah. So if I was getting in the shower, I'd turn the water on to simmer and I'd put the potatoes in the microwave, take the shower, come out, get dressed, make it, and then just be out the door. But that was important to him. But the service so what was, of that. Yes. The, the service, the meaning to yeah. you. Oh, and, and, and by the way, the pans were washed. Everything was clean before I left. So like I didn't, I wasn't like, like throwing a bunch of stuff in the sink. Like even today, yeah. Like the rules, like in the house is like, if someone cooks, the other person washes right, the dishes, right. right? I wash my own pans. I, cause I make such a, I, I got shit everywhere. Cause yeah. I'm so used to having a kitchen where it's like pots and pans. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> do this in this pan, do that in that pan, right? So it's all of that type well, of stuff. Well, one of my own badges, cause I was a Girl Scout. One of my very first badges was a cooking badge. Yeah. And 
you had to clean up as you went along. Oh, yes. That was it. You couldn't get your badge unless yep. you knew how to clean up as you went along. So um, that kind of in, was instilled in me as uh, cleaning up as I go. Yeah. Well, but I make a mess. Don't ask. Yeah. Don't ask Cap. <laughs> I make a mess in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I like to be creative and whip it up. But I, I would cook with my, uh, if I cook at my mother's house. Yeah. My mother will clean up as I go along, <laughs> but like underfoot and like she will take my cutting board away <laughs> and like, like put it somewhere. She will take my this and like, and all of a sudden you're like, like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So your daughter, so you, how many kids do you have? Two? I have two children. Two kids. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Boy and a girl. A boy and a girl. Yeah. Yeah. My son uh, is 18. Just going to be 18 in Goodness. this week. Goodness. Yes. It yeah. makes me old very fast. I only have, uh, I have two two boys, yeah. 22 and 20. And um, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. So so your daughter does the uh, the cooking for you with the egg sandwich. Does your son well, cook it a, all? No. We, actually, he's cooking now mm -hmm. because his girlfriend was vegetarian and gluten free. Oh, okay. So he cooks for her. Yeah. Which just surprises the heck out of me. <laughs> so he'll make her like uh Nothing like an, motivates like, like an like impossible burger. Like <laughs> an impossible bur uh the impossible burger mm -hmm. or uh, beyond beef. Yeah. Bolognese sauce mm -hmm. out of that with gluten fruit with chickpea pasta. He does he does it and does it well. You're kidding. Nope. So what what is the um the I mean, are you seeing just today the things you have to do before we cook tonight? You, are you, what are you seeing in your family and you? Do you have major, major goals going on or you're just every day just getting it done? There's, I got to be here at two. I got to be there at five. I'm having a red eye tonight. I'm going to do a movie. I'm going to do this. I'm, my only concern is the next meal that goes out, the next burger that's happening. A lot of other people worry about other things. And you have brunch now here we at have brunch, Alma Nove. Yeah, we have brunch at Alma Nove. So that means things are going well. You're adding a new... Well, a for, new for me, I anybody in the kitchen, brunch is a full letter word. Yeah. It just is. We just... <laughs> Why? Because it's one day yeah. <laughs> and you think about all of the prep and all of the work that goes into it yeah. to get it done. Well, what kind of brunch do you have? What do you mean prep? Like what? We have um, your eyes just popped out of your well, head. It's that thing. What kind of prep? Well, think about it. We have about 20 items on the yeah. brunch menu. So French toast. We don't make French toast. Um, a hollandaise sauce. We make a okay. duck confit hash. We make these beautiful cod cakes. Oh we make a lobster hollandaise and we poach eggs, put them on the, um, the cod cake and then top that with a lobster hollandaise. Just making home fries. The pans Are and pans of bacon, me? cooking sausage, all of the things. And we make so much, we smoke our own salmon. We have bagels, uh, we have bagels with smoked salmon. So we do that. Uh, we bake a lot of, we, we're baking a lot of our own breads in here. So we do this one dish. It's, um, it's, it's uh, Italian shrimp and grits. It's from, and it's Calabrian and it's orange as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So we make a polenta cake for the grits, put that down. And then we do the, for the, um, for the shrimp, we use these beautiful um, Florida shrimp. These small Florida shrimp, and they're they're not treated. They're beautiful. They're Prawn, very the they're very yeah. clean tasting. We sauté those, and we served in it uh, with smoked pancetta, Calabrian chilies, and make this beautiful sauce and drape that over the polenta, and it's ridiculously good. So there's a lot of work that goes into it. We we have to pan up pans and pans of bacon. Because we have to we have to cook all the bacon in the morning, and you know, so there's lots of things that we typically don't do. Did you see that twinkle? <laughs> Did you so, see the twinkle when you yeah. talk about food? The twinkle <laughs> when you talk about well, food. That brunch. Wow, <laughs> they're crazy if they haven't tried it. They they have to try it, and, oh and, my so, gosh. and even for us, wow. like oh. you know, we do. But all of those pieces that go into it, yeah, it's it's just. How long does it serve till? So uh, we, Sunday, on only? Sundays, sun, Sundays only till uh, from ten to two. Ten to two. And basically, I just got tired of letting the NFL was basically it was like it was like that that fall thing yeah. where the NFL kind of dictates because nobody comes to the restaurant to watch a football game. Right, right. They just they don't do it. And so for us, we wanted to at least give an opportunity for someone to come out. They're opening up early and things like that. And so we've been very. It's been it's 
been very well received and we're very happy with it. But it's like I said, it's still those things in that added piece of chaos. So we don't close okay. between brunch All right. and dinner. Like the setup before four. Yes. So two o'clock and you're, you're So two o'clock, we yeah. roll right into dinner. Yeah. So that transition piece, and that's what I struggle with yeah. is because that transition piece of people, because you know, there's a couple of brunch menus still out there, a couple of dinner menus are getting handed out, and we're trying to change the kitchen up. Change because the whole you've got line the, like, up. French toast going. <laughs> exactly. Get rid of the French toast. Now we got to do this. <laughs> get the sirloin. Bring in the sirloin. Get rid of the French yep. toast. And, and sometimes people yeah. say, "Can I get like at brunch?" I'll say, "Can I get some duck?" Oh yeah, of course. We'll make you because we're in the yes business. Yeah. So that's it's always about yes for any customer for any customer experience. It's always about the yes part. And so for us, like whatever people want, that's what we're gonna make. So every once in a while, I get, do you think I could get you know something off the brunch menu? It's I know it's I know it's four o'clock, and but do you th- like, of course, because you want to say yes. People remember yes. They remember no, but they remember yes. And when they remember no, that hurts because like I wanted to get this and they wouldn't make it for me. Yeah. What are they jerks? Yeah. Like I don't, you don't want that. You don't want that yeah. people to think that. So they not know how to make it, you know, anything like that. You don't want to be in that position. So speaking of yes, thank you for saying yes to me. Oh, well, you didn't thank give me—you you didn't give me much of a choice. <laughs> like, like, hey, hey, you need to do this, okay? You know, I'm—I'm I'm usually yeah. That's typically how that works. But no, this has been a blast, and I'm looking forward to tonight because tonight, tonight, tonight's the part that that that's the difference in my day. That's where it's like I get out, you know, we're going to do this. It's a charity piece. It's this, it's that. We're going to get to meet some great people. We're going to have a little fun, show you how to, you know, a little bit in the kitchen. So these things all, it's 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 a really good thing for, for me and for us and for what it is that we do. Yeah. Well, you've done it twice. You've done it twice during our conversation. Oh, yeah. You're, 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 you're superstitious. Well, usually I'm not so. here because I have such a wooden. He- I have a wooden head, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's that thing. I, I I if when something goes well and you just want to, you just like, and that's that reminder to me. Yeah. That. Thankful. Chaos Crazy. can happen at any, at any moment. Yeah. Entropy. And the whole universe is, is designed on entropy. Yeah. I mean, everything towards disorder. Yes. <laughs> to and order it is a big task. Yeah, and 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 I need stru- I need structure. Yeah. And so for me to, to to try to like when we're able when we succeed in what we're trying to accomplish, we should be thankful because shit can go south real fast. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers on that one. Thank you. You're the best. Thank you. Superstar. I don't know about that. <laughs> I can say it.